Oh, did he forget quick defenses? When is he gonna pop it? Yeah, you're late. There it is. He gets three, big one. All right, one, two, three hunts, I'd say. One, two, th yeah, fine, it's fine. They, worst case, they can just gather these berry bushes, which each of these have like a thousand food on it. Should be okay. Some Spanish jokes going about Salvador. So, um, Malta versus Haiti on the fourth match of Gemino versus Danny Lech, the finals of the Wars of Liberty Tournament of 2019. Second annual wall jamboree about to come to a finish. Especially if Daniel wins this game, he will be declared the victor of this tournament. Uh, but Germano using the Maltese wood bias to get that trade post over there as well as the outposts to uh, gain that early XP bonus. Let's give a look good look at the decks. Revolution still free on this patch. Uh, the Nording patch has not hit yet, so Revolution is still free and available at H3 for Haiti. Um, so we're definitely going to be seeing that. Well, as Gemino will be going for the Maltese Footman Rush. Can the players please play a game on Wall Alaska Tourney version? Why not? That that map hasn't been used, has it? Which increases hit points by 40%. Oh boy. Who said I'm revolting? I did. <laughs> Some legendary chats between the two players. Right, so Haiti has. Uh, quite interesting s villages, uh, they're called Civits, but essentially if they um, they can't die, they can only be defeated, which means uh, take an explorer's death, if, he, death is, if he's defeated he will just fall on the floor, uh, won't be deleted, but can be rescued later on. Same for the Haitian villages, they cannot be killed, but only defeated, so they will be on the floor. Uh, Maltese villages are just basic European ones. Um, other than that, nothing too much to say about each of these civilizations for age one, except the fact that Malta also starts with a field hospital wagon, which can then transform into a field hospital, which heals nearby units. Um, building this also grants Malta some XP, so combined with the trade post, the field hospital, and the outpost quick defense build XP, uh, Malta can get their first shipment very, very early into the game, uh, which will usually be the three settlers and grant them a nice bonus uh, in terms of speed. There it is, H2 with 400 wood, pretty classic. Uh, the thing about the field hospital though is um, usually the wagon is used for a bit more exploration, but if it is killed, and it is pretty easy to siege with only 275 HP, um, it does grant the other player quite a bit of XP as well, so it is XP for both sides in the long run. Market coming down, barracks at the back. Looks like Jaimuna will be trying to mass first, otherwise, he would have 
played more aggressively, but um, in my opinion, it could be a better idea to kill Haiti early on and uh, before they revolt, because once they revolt for free, uh, they gain access to all of those glorious uh, revolt units. And the thing is, they get the rev revolution option at age 3, but once they revolt, it's the same as an age 4 revolt of a normal civilization, so essentially almost imperial power. Yes, as, as mentioned by Scepter, unfortunately players are seeking the more favoured civilizations to use in the tournament for better chances of winning games. Um, so definitely we see a lot more of certain civilizations where some have simply never been played. But uh, honestly, even Romania has been played in this uh, tournament, so we have seen a good coverage. Two Savage, oh, one, one Snake Spar, sorry. Uh, but yeah, one Settler will be defeated and gives us a good opportunity to see how it would look like. Uh, looks like Jonah will be going to just uh, keep Daniel contained within his base, with Footman kind of patrolling around. Uh, but looks like Daniel is playing... This hunt is killing me. Which hunt? Oh, his hunt was here at the beginning of the game, but has moved all the way here. Oh, and he just herded away. Oh boy. The thing is, he also has another hunt here, which would normally be his. But uh, Daniel is now building an outpost there with pickets on standby. So he's essentially lost it there. <laughs> Getting that footman stuck against the wall and uh, beating it to death there. Thirty melee damage, yes, footmans are quite powerful. This is why I made Malta? No, I made Malta for long swords and trebuchets. That's what I found to be very cool at the first time. <laughs> oh, someone's studying. You did your research indeed. He knows Daniel has an outpost somewhere. He just barely missed it. Oh boy. Unlucky. Let's get a quick look at the decks again. Yep. Yeah, the five hoop throws at H3 is still an option for Malta. Um, Jay should probably actually aim for H3 himself as well. The reason being, uh, the hoop throwers would be a great option against colonial militia. <laughs> Here it is. As expected, yes, Jay really did his homework. Oh boy. Jay is now capital age, which means he has access to hoop throwers. He has two shipments ready. So hoop throwers and access to whatever he likes. Falconets too would be very good at defending his base. He is now moving all his villages. Pull trick. Oh, how much HP does that one have? Just five. Um, but all the villagers are now at this side, probably gonna go for the hunts. 
Uh, but the great thing about the down villagers is that once he revolts, because they're still technically in the game, they will come back as militia. So the revolt, that, that is why Haiti is based on revolting, so that each villager is still present. But now we have veteran footmen, it has been upgraded. So um, that is going to call trouble for Daniel pretty soon. Wait till I complain about weak infantry siege from Vivid. Uh, but yes, uh, you can see before the upgrade, uh, this was upgraded. So 12 siege is the upgraded version, but essentially all Maltese infantry units, age 2, only have 10 siege. Knights having 15 siege is the highest siege unit on legs for Malta. Right, so hoop throwers are ready, probably looking to get those falconets as well. Uh, we do have five knights. Uh, knights are pretty powerful as they are quite tanky units. And there it is, capital H. Getting the maroons should be able to revolt any time now. It is for free for Haiti at age 3. The villagers also now going towards the base. There it is, revolution hits, more maroons. Uh, they're essentially skirmisher units, which means footmen and hoop throws are in danger. Maxim guns also present. And uh, here it is, the fight. Hoop throws and footmen will be very, very powerful against these units, but uh, so will he. Let's see which army prevails. I feel like whoever gets the first hit would have big advantage. Really gotta watch out for the hoop throws there, buddy. Yeah, that's what you get. Hoop throws, rate of fire was nerfed, but um, not until the Nordic patch. Gotta keep that maxing gun. Oh boy, is it Haiti causing the lag a bit after the revolt happens. Very, very tense here, but we do have knights. Quick defense pops in, knights present, maxim guns firing up the house. That is going to be a win for Malta, honestly. So, <laughs> yeah, clear the disparity because Daniel was going for that um, revolt, but he did it quite slow, investing in lots of pickets beforehand, um, which led to German not having enough time to mass footmen, get the hoop throwers at age three, knights present, so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, that was a bit too delayed.